Uh, we were talking about this voter ID controversy, right. primarily the idea that Mark Ritchie can rewrite the titles to the amendments. Uh, these are the uh, the titles that you actually see on the ballot. To give you an example, as he changed the wording of the marriage amendment to say to limit marriage to same-sex couples. And if you'll notice, uh, driving around uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul this weekend, I noticed that uh, the signs are already up that say, please don't, you know, vote no to not, we don't want to limit marriage. That's a completely different uh, question than what the original question right. on the ballot was. Same is also true with photo ID. It's turned it into a very complicated, confusing thing, as opposed to simply the original one was saying you should have to have an ID to vote. And you were talking before the break about uh, his partisan approach to the office and that we have a some type of uh, double punch or two punch. Well, when I want to talk to Dan McGrath. So you say that uh, Richie is abusing his office and this goes back to uh, his actual election. Yeah, I mean, this, is, uh, this is the most partisan Secretary of State, I think the state of Minnesota has ever had. And if you look at his origins, how he was ushered into office, it was by the George Soros funded Secretary of State project and ACORN, a well known corrupt election registration organization. So it's not too surprising to us that the Secretary of State is using his office in this very partisan manner, in our view, to try to undermine the integrity of our election system. But the press, the local press, has finally started to start picking up on this, that uh, he's not being entirely straightforward with the people. How so? I mean, I, are they starting to pick up on the uh, the support and the alliance with uh, people at ACORN or with George Soros, or is there something else that's coming to light? I think it's more just an observation of his actions. Uh, when he's gone completely off the rails with retitling these ballot questions, something that has never been done before in the history of his office, uh, twice in the same year, and is you know, dealing with three lawsuits over these issues, people have started to take notice. Well, yeah, we got Especially four professors. Wait a second, Dan. We got four professors at the uh, University of Minnesota who say that this was entirely appropriate. <laughs> Did you see that? Changes to in-person and absentee voting and voter registration provisional ballots. What did I just say? What does that mean? I, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's the title that he chose right. for the voter ID amendment because he wants it to go down in flames. Confusing voters will cause them to not vote on the issue. Right. Not voting on it is a no vote. Well, they're trying the, to skew the election process. The professor's uh, position is that because they didn't override the governor's veto of the actual bill, that they don't have the right to name the amendment. And my my question is, if they pass the amendment with the title, then why wouldn't that just go on to, you know, could those guys be right? Well, uh, Article 9, Section 1 of the Minnesota Constitution gives the legislature the exclusive authority to present uh, constitutional amendments to the people. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the Secretary of State in that process. His duty is ministerial. Right. He's supposed to do what the legislature tells him to do with regard to printing the ballots. Now, there's a statute that he points to that says the Secretary of State shall give a ballot question an appropriate title. So he believes that he can override the Constitution with the statute. I mean, anybody knows that the Constitution trumps statutes. The statute only kicks in if the constitutional uh, ability of the legislature isn't met in titling the ballot. Well, and Dan, first off, uh, there is a legal question as to whether the uh, legislature could even delegate the authority, uh, the constitutional authority to uh, provide a title. But more importantly, uh, the statute that the Secretary of State and our vaunted Attorney General uh, that they have relied on does not say that he has the right to rewrite a title that has That's been true. duly passed by the legislature pursuant to its constitutional authority. And people should understand that prior to the Legacy Amendment, my understanding is the legislature did not, as a matter of course, provide a title with a proposed constitutional amendment, which is why they, they did that, so that the Secretary of State would. The Legacy Amendment was the first time the legislature actually passed a title with the proposed constitutional amendment for the ballot. And by the way, Secretary of State Ritchie was in office at that time. He didn't change that one. He didn't change that one. <laughs> well, you think that, uh, and it's it's very interesting, that this Secretary of State project, basically their objective is to get secretaries of states that are sympathetic to their points of view uh, all across the United States. It's a San Francisco-based project 
And uh, you say that Richie was the, was the poster boy. What is their agenda once they get in office? Well, um, it, looking at Mark Ritchie, the agenda seems to be to loosen up the election system as much as possible. His first act in office was to dismantle one of the safeguards that we had in place to prevent ballot box stuffing. Well, why would you take away a fundamental safeguard like that? What, what was it? What was signatures? What was the safeguard? This is, Tom, you should have some experience with this because this was an issue. That's why I want you to say it. Uh, <laughs> Prior to the Secretary of State Mark Ritchie taking over, uh, election judges at the end of the night were required to count signatures on the rosters and compare the number of signatures on the rosters to the number of ballots that were actually physically in the ballot box. If there was a difference, they had to reconcile that difference by randomly removing uh, ballots from the ballot box. But Ritchie said, oh, no, no, that's too cumbersome. What we're going to do now is just count these insecure ballot receipts. And Ramsey County Election Manager Joe Mansky testified that when election judges are out of balance now, he's personally aware that they sometimes just grab receipts from one pile and move it to the other and say, okay, now it balances. So if they have an excess of balance, they just eh, grab a few extra slips, we're good to go. Ugh. So uh, what's the next step here? I mean, you, you know, do we know that Richie has been, well, we do know that he's been actively campaigning against a voter ID. There's no question about that. He's been spreading misinformation. Uh, I just come right out and say it. He's lying about the impacts of the voter ID amendment in order to try to suppress votes. And he's apparently using state resources to do this when he's conducting ostensible training sessions around the state. They're training election judges for the 2012 election, but spending 20 to 30 minutes at the top of the training session bashing voter ID. Why do election judges working on this election even need to know a thing about voter ID when if it's an act that it won't even take effect until 2013? Right, and we're u- we're using you know taxpayers to uh, to finance that, and it doesn't matter how you feel about voter ID. You know what he's doing is opening the door to do that with other things that uh, that future secretaries of state. In other words, you may be against voter ID now, but it opens the door to the same kind of corruption on the other side at some point too. Yeah, you can't have a Secretary of State acting in a partisan and biased manner about something that's going to be on the ballot. It creates a very public sense of a conflict of interest. How we can how can we trust him to fairly and impartially administer the election when he's taking sides on it? Well, it doesn't, I, I mean, and if he's campaigning, nobody wants to uh, frustrate somebody's ability to do uh, something on their own time. But if he's actually doing it from the office with resources supplied by the office, that's a that can be That's a violation of law, right? Yeah, well, I believe it is. That's why Senator Mark Perry has uh, been conducting committee hearings in the Government uh, Innovation and Veterans Committee on this, investigating whether he is in violation of state law, campaign finance laws. Uh, you know, if you're campaigning against or for a ballot question, the state requires you to form a ballot committee, which we have done. It's ProtectMyVote.com. We're reporting our expenditures and revenues. There's no reporting on the Secretary of State's advocacy against the amendment. Yeah, worse yet, he's using taxpayer dollars to do it if that's what he's doing. It looks that way. Dan McGrath, Minnesota Majority, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Davis and Emmer this morning, Twin Cities News Talk, AM 1130.